Hey, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world right now. Very happy to see you. And we will be starting uh, the monthly session with uh, BQBNs about all the progress that we made uh, this month. And uh, yeah, like there will be a couple of other things to share. Definitely, it will be uh, very interesting for those who don't attend my spaces on Twitter or who are not listening to it. But for those who are attending there regularly, I don't think like you will find anything new because you might be knowing already about all the developments that is going that is going on at BQ. So uh, first of all, like uh, we, we are in a very difficult phase of the market right now because of all the global scenarios that is going on and uh, all the uncertainties that is there around. Uh, the crypto markets or any financial markets for that reason. So we we are not really seeing those types of pumps or those, those type of bullish markets that we used to see uh, in the last year. Many people might be very new to the market. Maybe they just came uh, last year or something. So they might not be knowing what a bear market looks like in the crypto. But for those uh, who have already seen 2017, 18, 19 bear market, this will be nothing new to them as they have already seen it once in their life. But still like uh, in 2017, 18, the big bull market and 18 to 19, Q2, Q3, what we saw as a bear market, that was much more severe than what we are seeing right now. Because there, what happened is like we fell 50%, 70% very quickly. And then it was a slow kill, slowly falling down every day, a little by little. But we are not seeing that uh, this time because of the obvious reasons of um, being, you know, like being a much more matured market than what we used to be before. And the adoption is huge as compared to the past. And the third thing is like, there is more liquidity in the market now than ever. Because when there is so much of adoption, when people are speaking about Bitcoin so much, and there are a lot of people who are ready to buy it at a lower levels, definitely there is a lot of money waiting to come into the market. But the money, as we all know, that um, it will not come so easily to the market when everything is in red. Because more or less everybody has this principle of buy the green candle, sell the red candle. So this um, mindset will always be there, but um, we are also seeing some participation from uh, institutions side. I think institutions will always enter at the right time. And they too know like uh, the global scenario is not good right now. And I have been saying this one since a long time that um, if there is a warlike situation, if the economies are going down, that doesn't necessarily mean crypto has to go up. I don't think it works that way. Although the assumption is that it should behave in that way, but assumptions are just assumptions, but they're not the reality. Because when wars are going on, when so much of uncertainties are there around, people want to have cash, people want to have stability. And we cannot expect that kind of stability in cryptocurrencies because we can expect a, a lot of returns here. So look at cryptocurrencies more as an asset where you can park your money to grow your money then you know like having it as a currency to spend it so it doesn't work that way and even the recent pump to forty-five thousand dollars, i have always been saying that i was skeptical about it and i didn't believe that it's going to sustain and we are seeing what is already happening right now it was just based on the rumors like some kind of oligarchs or anyone who is under the un sanctions or anyone under the sanctions from us or europe is pumping their money into markets that's that's not true because these people obviously know how to you know like keep their money safe and they don't necessarily need this route of uh, coming to cryptocurrencies and even if they have cryptocurrencies now all the exchanges including binance have already uh, said it very openly that they are going to follow the sanctions issued against russia which means uh, probably the Russian users who are on centralized exchanges, they will be given a time frame where they can withdraw all the crypto assets and there, there, and after that, their accounts will be closed or it will be restricted that they cannot use it for some time. So it's not like they will have unrestricted access, like whenever they want, they buy it or something. It doesn't work that way. 
and to go through you know decentralized exchange using some apps to do any any kind of things because the apps are also uh, under un sanctions so i don't think it works that way and uh, to think uh, that this money is going to come into the market and that will save us from this one and there'll be a new bull market it's all just rubbish it's not going to happen that way at all whatsoever so what is happening right now is um, some people are finding value the people who wanted to buy it at $60,000 or $65,000, they find it a good price because it's trading, you know, like significantly lower than those prices, almost 50%. So probably people are buying a little by little, but uh, that doesn't mean actually that uh, they will be going all in. Because even I myself, I'm telling to everybody that this is not the stage where people have to go all in right now. Because even now, I expect the markets to come down to, you know, $34,000 levels first. It might find a base there, or probably we will even come to $30,000, $31,000. Then we might have a nice bounce from there once again, which will be the second wave of bounce when, when market, you know, crashes. And that's how the market works. And after that bounce happens, like then we have to see how long will be the consolidation period because consolidation period will be very, very important in my opinion, because it's not just pump and dump that matters because these things happens all the time. But the consolidation phase gives a lot of strength to the market that gives a lot of information about the market behavior itself or how, how strong is the market to absorb all these kind of shocks. So far, market has absorbed the shocks of um, uh, the Russian-Ukrainian war. It has not fallen down so much, although some people were expecting it to come to $20,000, which I ruled out at that point of time. And even now, I don't feel $20,000 is so easy to happen. So, um, yeah, mar markets are like weak right now. It's really weak. And I don't see it pumping uh, beyond $45,000. I don't know, like it, it cannot simply happen. Even if it happens, I don't think it's going to sustain that. So we will be uh, trading very lower, but in a very big range. And I'm very happy like when the trading range is very big because it becomes almost predictable if it is so big. I mean, you know, between uh, 30,000 or 31 or 34,000 to let me say 45,000, it's a good 20% uh, upside and like a good 20 to 30% downside which makes it far more safe to me and predictable than, you know, moving in a very small range. Like, let me say only 35 to 38, 35 to 38 and 38 back to 35. And this kind of a very small range is very, very, very dangerous. It's extremely dangerous because when uh, this kind of small range is taking place in crypto markets, especially when there is no trend, when there is nothing good happening, when everything is, you know, um, looking very bad, which means like there is a very big dump which is going to happen. And those kind of dumps are very terrible, seriously terrible. This we saw already in uh, 2018 when, you know, like uh, first what happened is like from 19,000, we came to 11,000 very, very fast. And after 11,000, like we again had a kind of like recovery to 15,000. And then like between 13,000, 12,000, we were there for some time. It was just like a small moment of 10%. And then what we saw was like very drastic moment onto the downside because bear market means we are more on the downside, but it doesn't mean like we will have a dump. But I suspect that to happen and I will be a little bit more skeptical if the trading range becomes very, very small. And that's why I'm happy that um, trading range is not so small uh, for us right now. Trading range is quite big. Uh, which 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 makes me feel that like the consolidation phase will soon kick in when when we fix the lower point and the upper point between this range. So when these points are fixed, then we keep moving here. And what people do is like mostly you know kind of scalps. They buy at a lower price and they sell at a little bit higher price and they again go back uh, to the lower price because this is not the market where you can expect any kind of X right? You cannot expect like 3x, 5x, 10x, like no, this is not that type of market. In this type of market, you should expect only like 10% profit, 15% profit, be happy, whatever you make, because this is that type of market right now. 
So that's why don't don't have like very big price target for yourself. You see, by economy, I have been recommending that since almost one point seven dollars. So recently it came up to like one dollar one cent or something. And yesterday it was almost like 1.5, 1.6. That was a very big pump. So if you have been doing this DCA or like what I call a systematic investment plan, buying 10% uh, of your money at every 10% fall in the prices. So imagine like you, you have seen XYZ coin at uh, $100. Then you, and you have $100 with you. So you have kept $10 at every 10% drop in these prices. Like at $100, you will buy $10 worth of uh, that coin. At $90, you will buy 10% more, $10 more, 80, 70, 60, 50, like that, 10, 10, $10 more. If you were doing that with Biconomy, then you would be in huge profit right now. So that's why the, this, this, um, this systematic investment plan is extremely good when uh, market is very uncertain. And when you know that uh, any project is fundamentally very strong because my economy is very strong, fundamentally speaking. So fundamentals are very, very important because once the fundamentals, uh, you know, like uh, when, when you see the value unlocking happening, that is the time like when you hear about those projects, which no one has ever heard, they might not be knowing anything about this project at all, but they will start to pump very heavily at that point of time because the value unlocking is, is, is extremely strong in, in fundamental tokens or coins or anything as such. So that's the only reason like why I was recommending these kind of coins, because I know there is a lot of fundamentals there and the value unlocking uh, has to happen. Apart from that, like all other speculative tokens and, uh, you know, coins, I don't know, like most of them, to be honest, like they will go almost close to zero by end of this um, bear market. Really, they will go to zero, almost to zero. They, they will not have any value at all. Because what happens um, when we are in a NFT boom or a metaverse boom, like everybody is shouting, everybody wants to get into it. And, and people, those who get into this one, they don't even understand what the project is really doing, actually, what metaverse is really doing and why that metaverse is necessary and what is their competitive advantage and what types of companies are there, which is quite similar to them. What kind of valuations do they have? They don't make any of this kind of homeworks. Okay, they saw a metaverse name, let's jump into it. They saw an NFT name, let's jump into it. So people keep jumping into these things, but they don't know that they're jumping off the cliff without having any parachute. So what is going to happen? They will be expecting that parachute is going to open, which doesn't exist. By the time they realize like there was no parachute, their head is already on the boulder, broken. This is what is going to happen like uh, with, with all those people who jumped into this type of tokens uh, without knowing you know, what they are doing. But there are always industry leaders and that's what we need to follow. Like, you know, uh, I always speak about Decentraland because, you know, that is the kind of token which will give money even in the bear market also, to be honest. If you buy it at a good price, if you buy it close to the support levels, if you buy it close to, you know, some kind of events that is going to happen. I always recommend everybody to, you know, check this coin uh, market calendar, coin market cal every now and then watch it like you know once in a day or once in a week or something coin market cal it's amazing you know there you get a lot of information about um, any crypto token or any crypto projects what newly they are going to you know bring uh, any kind of mainnet launch or any kind of product launch any such things they will be announcing it there and you can see that like what is going to happen and based on that uh, you know um, event you you can get into a position but don't get into a position if they are shit coins because again that might be a trap so get into those kind of coins which you have heard which you know that's how you have to behave in a bear market you have to be very very conservative in the tokens that you are entering in in bull market you can enter any single coin no problems at all because everything will pump so at this point of time, like if people really want to go for metaverse or really want to go for like something related to NFTs or something, they can go with, you know, Decentraland, they can go with uh, uh, Sandbox or Chili's. These are the type of tokens like which can be bought during the bear market in a DCA, of course, not going all in. And once we get into bull market, like then, you know, we will be having the last laugh. 
we will be smiling, we will be enjoying at that point of time because prices will be rising. We will book very good profits at that point of time. But if you panic at this point of time and if you sell all your bags and when you know that your bags are not bad, but they're fundamentally good, but you know, pri price means nothing to be honest, I'm telling you. There was a time when uh, uh, Amazon stocks fell to $6 back in you know this uh, dot-com bubble, but it meant nothing because they had the same number of um, clients, they had like same number of employees, the revenues are the same, profits are the same. It's just a price, it will come up one or the other day, you don't have to worry. But always think like uh, where you're putting in money and what is it all about? That is all matters. So if something is fundamentally strong, we don't have to worry about it at all. I still feel that um, this year we will see comeback of uh, uh, DeFi, decentralized finance, because like uh, some new innovations are happening where uh, traditional finance is coming to decentralized finance. It's like some of the banks are discussing now to offer uh, decentralized finance products to their clients. And also banks themselves are planning to invest certain part of their portfolio into decentralized finance for some fixed set amount of money. Uh, that's why I feel, I feel, because imagine if bank is uh, keeping their US dollars with um, the Federal Reserve, how much are they going to get? Like 0.25%, 1% or I don't know, not more than that. But if you keep the same amount of money with uh, decentralized finance, you can easily get like 3%, 5%, which is significantly higher than what you can get uh, for your bond yields. Of course, we, we can always argue about the safety and, uh, you know, institutions things very conservative, but, you know, things are changing. That's what I can tell you. Things are really changing and it's not like how it used to be before because even US dollars is not safe. We are seeing what kind of inflation is going on in the United States now. More than 80% of US dollar circulation has been printed in just last two years. In just last two years, more than 80% of the US dollar that is in circulation has been printed. So you can imagine what kind of inflation you will even see going forward. Wars are good for these things, you know, you can, you can divert all the domestic uh, <laughs> uh, problems that is there and to divert people's attention to something else. But there, there is a problem. There, there is a problem. We cannot forget that. There are many, many problems in the global system or economical system. So if people are buying bonds, I don't know if it's really a smart move or not. But definitely decentralized finance is something that every financial institution is currently looking at. I am getting a lot of, you know, institutional interest also, which I'll speak uh, later on during uh, the presentation. So that's why I, I feel like there will be a, a return of decentralized finance this year, because especially when the bear market is coming, when you know that you can't make money by, you know, like uh, investing like 10x, 20x kind of profits, but you have cryptos and that cryptos have to make money for you like you have Bitcoin in your wallet. What is it even good for? Are you using Bitcoins to buy something? No. Are you using buying Bitcoin, you are using Bitcoins to buy some property? No. Then why you are still holding Bitcoin? Let's be honest that we are all speculating the prices of the Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency to move up. We are not expecting that to be used for some kind of use case. How many of you have used Luna token for paying for some gas on Luna blockchain? I don't know. Are you using Polkadot uh, token for paying for some gas fees or something on that one? I don't think so. We're all buying these tokens in, in anticipation of the prices to move up. So that is why everybody are having so many tokens, which they never use it for the use case of, uh, of, of the existence of the token. So what we will do with this token now? We will go on platforms where we can stake the tokens to get paid the APR returns. So what is this whole system called as? That is what is DeFi, decentralized finance. And that is why a lot of money, the total value locked, what you see as TVL, will be locked on decentralized finance. And when this TVL starts to become big and big and big, it will be again, once again, the boom of uh, decentralized finance. When the market is pumping, it's not so good for decentralized finance because everybody wants to, you know, like participate in the market moment. When the markets are not doing anything, 
people rush to decentralized finance to earn money from it. So it's very logical for me and it's, it's very practical for me to think that decentralized finance will be again back with a boom this year. So uh, decentralized finance is something that I'm looking at and there will be many other use cases for NFTs. I'm not speaking about this ape NFTs. I'm not speaking about monkey NFTs, cat NFTs, dog NFTs, and some other NFTs or Baba NFTs. Like, no, I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about NFTs that will have real use cases. I'm speaking about NFTs like where, you know, uh, the meaning of NFTs will be redefined once again. So that's why um, there will be some kind of uh, platforms like, for example, um, again, once again, like Decentraland and these kind of things who might think about these type of projects and they can launch this one. Um, that's why this is also one of the areas like where you can really watch this year. Um, and, and definitely something is going to happen there. Because initially when a new technology comes, people will not know how to use it, but everybody knows something can happen there. Right. So initially when uh, emails and internet came, we didn't really know many things are possible or we didn't have that kind of technology or thought to change that one. Because the moment internet came, we didn't see Facebook coming. We, we, we saw like initially, you know, like emails and then, you know, uh, kind of like eBay or some other kind of things coming or pornography coming and like many other things like which was um, uh, some of the use cases of internet when it came very newly and then we saw how it went uh, mainstream in the same way like nft as a technology or nft as a kind of like um byproduct of cryptos will have like many 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 other use cases so definitely this is something that i'm looking forward in this year also so these are the you know like sectors where i expect a lot of action to happen a lot of new things to happen because there are new players in these industries. There is real use case for that one this year going forward. So that's my uh, point of view about uh, the markets, um, like where we stand now. And definitely we are in a uh, bear market. We are very weak right now. And we have to be very careful about investing our money in, in the tokens that we don't know and we don't understand because there is every chance that like you will lose all of your money completely if you are not careful at this point of time. If you invest in the tokens like which has fundamentals, then you don't have anything to worry because prices can fall, but that is not the end. Falling of the prices is not my problem, actually. That has never been my problem. But my real question is like, will it come back one day? And if it has to come back one day, what is the, you know, like um, the logic behind the reversal to happen? So these are the points that you need to ask to yourself. And if you have an answer for it, go ahead, then you are on the good way. But if you don't have an answer to these kind of questions, you need to think about it. That's it uh, from my side about the market updates. And um, coming to like Bcube updates, this month, like we made some uh, key hirings. We hired a, a data engineer. We are looking for a quantitative developer because we, we need to build a very robust uh, backtesting engine, which will be the backbone of our strategy factory. And we can make it with, uh, you know, uh, developers also, but still we need uh, the quant knowledge for that one. So that's why we are hiring dedicated quant developers. So these people are quants, but they are more into computer science engineering. So they can use their knowledge of the quants, which is coming from mathematical AI site, but they also know programming much better than normal quants because normal quants basically come from mathematics and physics and they're more like researchers who can make all the, you know, like ideas and they can formulate it. But to execute this idea, we will need a quant developer. So that's why we are hiring a quant developer also and we are uh, hiring new quantitative researchers also to build uh, different type of strategies on, on DeFi, different type of strategies on, um, you know, like all, all, all the centralized exchanges and even cross between the centralized exchange and decentralized exchange and market neutral strategies. Market neutral strategies is something which I'm really looking forward because I think opportunity is tremendous there. Uh, what we do there is like, you know, we go long, for example, on um, the, uh, let me say on the spot market and we short the same thing in the future market. And we short those uh, where we will get paid 
in a funding phase when we are shorting that in the future. And since we are already long on the spot market, the difference in the price will not be so big. So we are earning money with uh, the, the funding phase. So this is point number one. And every time there will be some kind of, you know, arbitrage opportunity between uh, the futures and the spot market. So this also we will be able to take advantage of. And very easily it's possible to make like 20 to 23% kind of returns every year using this kind of strategies. And this is like not so risky also at the same time. So this is for a different type of um, uh, mindset and this is for a different type of clients, what we are looking for. So we will be uh, building all these market neutral strategies and we'll be building like a cross chain strategies also, uh, like a cyclic strategies between uh, one chain to another chain. Right now, what we have built for BCube, uh, the cyclic arbitrage, which will be going live in like another one or two weeks. And this one works for only uh, Ethereum based chain within only Sushi, uh, Sushi Swap and Uniswap. This is what we have built, but we want to slowly expand that to, you know, Matic and other type of blockchains also. But first we are concentrating only on EVM, which is Ethereum virtual machine, which includes like Ethereum, Matic, Binance Smart Chain, because all the three uses the same language, like Solidity, and they're all based on like EVM. So it's very easy for us to build. And then once this is successful, after iterating it for some time and running it for a few months, then we will be expanding that to other blockchains also. It can be anything like Avalanche, Solana, or anything else. So this is how our uh, recruitment process is going. And we have already hired um, a product owner uh, who is also an expert in UX, which we need very much as we go to our new website. Um, He's, uh, he's doing very great and we're very happy about um, all, the, all the developments happening from the product side. And uh, yeah, like sentiment analysis, we are uh, already, you know, like starting to work on the smart indicators based on this data. Because currently what you are seeing on the website is uh, a raw data, which hedge funds love to use. And we are already getting some inquiries from hedge funds and institutions who would like to get data from us to build their own models because um, giving all this raw data, what we have on the platform is like giving you all the vegetables and all the spices. So then you can use your chefs to make soup out of it or a sauce out of it or anything that you want. In the same way, like if we give a raw data to these financial institutions, they will have many data scientists. They will have many quants in their team who will be able to, you know, take this raw data, refine it properly and they can use this data to their requirements like however they want so in the same way like what we are doing is like from the raw data we are trying to build smart indicators which will help us at bq for building our own models because right now we are not using sentiment analysis uh, indicators for our own models from our models i mean from our sentiment analysis uh, uh, engine. So what we want to do is like create smart indicators from this one and use it for our own models because the uh, sentiment analysis engine, what we have built is very, very robust. It's having like very, um, you know, good selection of channels. It's having good selection of uh, NLP technology. It's amazing. So we want to like fine tune this one for our requirements. And once we have uh, smart indicators, we will also be sharing that with uh, everybody, like how we are sharing it now, so that you will also be able to, you know, um, make some decisions based on the smart indicators, because smart indicators will not just show you the graph, but they will also give you, you know, signals to buy and sell. So this will be the use of uh, smart indicators. So cyclic arbitrage, as I said, uh, we already built it on uh, Ethereum. And now we will be running it on only on, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ethereum-based uh, DEX, which is SushiSwap and Uniswap. So we'll be only using these two things as of now. And we will try to validate this one for some time by seeing how it's working. And if it's working very well, and if we validate it for a um, good period of time, then we'll be expanding it to other blockchains also and other kind of applications also based on this one. But as of now, like we have uh, selected only these two things and uh, it works in a very unique way because we are not actually, uh, let me say like uh, we are making like a, we are buying um, Ethereum and next we will buy like, uh, uh, like WBNB, like wrapped BNB on Ethereum chain. 
and from WBNB, like we are buying some other crypto and from some other, some other crypto. So in spite of all this several buying, we consider all this cyclic movement as one single gas fees. So we are not paying it actually like um, if we are buying five or six coins, then we are not paying this gas fees five or six times. We are paying it only once. And also we have designed this one in a bifurcate trade arbitrage. That's how we call it in a technical way. And uh, in, in, in this kind of like a bifurcated algorithm, how we have designed it is like only when there is an opportunity, it will trade, which means like we are not wasting any gas piece if there is no opportunity to trade at all. So only when there is an opportunity, only when we know the right path, like what crypto we have to buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and we will see the shortest possible way. Right now it's capable of making up to five to six coins, like in one, one cyclic arbitrage. To make the profit but in the future like we want to make it like up to 15 or 20 coins also because more number of coins like we will have more opportunity not necessarily always true but definitely it will give you a lot of opportunity for selection and doing something so this is coming up uh, very nicely and uh, this will be only for bcube's internal purposes and a new execution engine will be coming uh, by end of this month it's um all, it's completely ready actually, but we are uh, just testing it, making some beta test with our own uh, accounts, and we are, we are also making different types of um, uh, actions on them to see like how they will behave and how they will react. We didn't find any bugs so far, so everything is going on fine, and we will be launching it by end of this month. Uh, we are also launching uh, third-party bot providers. Even they are also fine, but why we couldn't launch them uh, earlier is because. Uh, this is the first time like we are accepting someone's signal from trading view and we had to you know give them format all these things was very new to us because they our models are quite different from trading view models and uh, their format is there like buy bitcoin or like how it's going to come and we were trying to make the format just the way how uh, one of the third party providers were uh, giving us their format and then what happened, like the third, second one and third one also came who are third party providers. And they said like, hey, actually our, our, our format is quite different and we cannot make this type of format. So can you please change it? And initially we thought of like, okay, making a different format, but uh, it will not work that way because it's too much of work for us. And finally our execution engine will not be able to read that one, the current execution engine that we have. So that's why we had to, you know, like make a kind of like universal um, format so that every third party people will be able to comply with that if they want to, you know, have their strategy on our platform. So for those reasons, actually, it took some time for us to, um, uh, you know, discuss with them and to find a solution. And I think like now we have a, a kind of like universal format, which anybody has to follow if they want to have their strategy on BQ. But uh, the good thing is like when the new execution engine comes, we have designed it in a such a logic, like it can use different type of formats. So it will not be a problem for it. So in this way, like we will be uh, able to onboard many more third party bots also. So currently uh, one of the third party bots, we are testing it in the development environment just to see if we are receiving their signals properly, if it's coming properly and how it's working and uh, so on and so forth. And so far, like we have not encountered any problem. So it's it's going on fine. And um, the new website, um, um, yeah, like it's, it's, it's um, I, I mean, like all the community members uh, participated in the interviews, they gave their feedback on it, our own community members. So based on their feedbacks and based on uh, many workshops that we had with the uh, UX agency, we, we have come to a conclusion like how the website should come up and what is the most important thing that should come, what is must have, nice to have, good to have, and all these things. And we sorted it out based on, um, on the preference that our user has and the preference uh, at the stage where we are now, because we are aiming for next 20,000 new people to come on the platform. And for that to happen, like uh, we need to change many things on the platform. The value proposition should be very straight and clear. Um, and on the website, like many things should be mentioned, like, um, you know, people can use the bots for free if they stick enough number of BQ tokens. 
and sentiment analysis, TA, TS screener. So many, many details have to be there on the landing page, which we don't have right now because people are just coming on the platform. They're feeling like, okay, we came here and they're saying some bots are there. Okay, fine. Like, I don't want to go inside. So we want to put the prices of the bots and best performing bots on the weekly basis or monthly basis on the landing page so that people will be more motivated to go inside. We were also thinking about like um, a freemium model also like which um, uh, Hendrik is uh, our one of our community member like um, he gave this idea of making you know a freemium model we were thinking about it but the cloud uh, computing cost will be very heavy so probably uh, we will think uh, what we can do and uh, if we can come out with a solution definitely we will have a freemium model where people can use a very small amount of money like hundred dollars or two hundred dollars limit but they can still trade with the real money. So this, this freemium model is also something that uh, we are considering uh, when we have the new website. And we are also making, you know, like um, um, all, all the arrangements for uh, this freemium model to happen. So, uh, yeah, like, so th this is about uh, the website. And um, I think like we will get UX design and everything probably by um, end of uh, May or June. Only then we will be able to start to work on the new website because if we don't have wireframes, if we don't have uh, the outputs from the UX agency, we can't design the website. We have to wait for them to finish. And once they finish, like we, were, we are going to start the work. But in the meantime, we are already selecting all the um, uh, languages that we need to build the website, like what should be there on the front end, what should be there on the back end, what we have to use for you know blocks and FAQs and other kind of things we are discussing about it. And we have already made huge progress and we have a clear idea and a clear vision like how the website should look like, what should be there and what should not be there, all these things. Uh, and also based on our rich experience so far on the websites, like what worked, what didn't work and what people asked um, and, and what we can have more things so that people will be more happy using our platform. And... Um, Coming to the models, um, we have been uh, tracking the models um, ever since the optimization was going on. And every month on month basis, like as we see the uh, last one month, if you check performances of uh, all the bots, before it used to be like only a few, few bots were there, like which was doing good, but others were not doing good. But now the more and more bots started to do good on a monthly basis. So this is what we are seeing after the optimization is getting finished. And we are getting like, you know, a um, complete idea about like uh, how to change these models uh, in a different market condition. This was a very uh, big learning curve because in AI, if you do a little bit more things, then it is going to be very bad for you. And if you do very less, it's again going to be very bad. So you have to find that fine balance between, you know, um, um, teaching the model first and then allowing it to learn. It's not like, you know, uh, one stop plus hits and it has to learn from the next, right? It doesn't work like that one. Because if you read some books of AI, you will get enough knowledge about how AI systems work. It doesn't work that way. It, ha it, it, it has like many uh, different inputs that we have to give and it has to learn those inputs first. And then based on those inputs, uh, based on the markets in the real time trading, it, it learns over a period of time. If it's learning from every single stop loss, if it's learning from every single, you know, uh, moment, then it is going to be a very big mess and technology should not work that way also. So what we are seeing is like more number of winning uh, bots, like in a monthly uh, time frame, like because we take the snapshots every month and it's going on good. And uh, we are very confident, like going forward, it's going to be only better and better. We, we know like some of the other bots needs other type of optimization, which we have considered and which we have also made some notes. Um, I think like currently I feel Solana bots is something that we need to take care of. And what we have seen uh, also is that um, the TSL models, which is trailing stop loss models, which is in the development uh, environment. And we are checking the signals there and we are checking the results also. And I was personally very surprised that they are doing extremely good. Because for me personally, uh, trialing stop losses are not so good. I mean, like, you know, uh, uh, it can probably give you less profit than without that one, many a times. It's more like a defensive uh, approach than an offensive approach. 
but what i have seen and what i was very surprised is um like uh, our quants have developed the models in a very nice way with tsl and their uh, explanation was like in this type of market especially in a bearish market and or or like a market with negative bias tsl models works the best and they're really right actually because i'm seeing the current performance of um, uh, the some of the strategies on tsl models um, uh, strategies tsl models are doing good i mean like they're having more positive trades than uh, the real models that we have so that's why uh, I'm very confident about TSL models. So once we have this new execution engine by X or by end of this month, then we will be having this, uh, you know, uh, TSL models, and which is going to increase the profitability. Um, and it will be very, you know, defensive, as I said. So the risk will be low and uh, returns will be high. And once we have uh, execution engine by end of this month or first week of uh, April, then by first week of May, we are also planning to have, you know, setting your own take profit, setting your own targets. So we just provide the strategy to you. You can, you know, like decide on your um, uh, take profit and you can decide on your uh, uh, stop loss. But if you want the default, which is like what uh, is defined by our own models, you can still opt for default. But if you're not if you don't want a default um, settings from which is our settings, then you can make your own settings. So it's absolutely flexible, whether you want to use it on completely automated mode or some kind of predefined, um, you know, restrictions, which you would like to impose on it. So this will also be coming in the first week of May or something like that. And yeah, uh, yes, like, uh, as I said, like we are, we are, develop we are we're actually hiring this uh, quant developer then we will have this backtesting engine. Once we have backtesting engine, then it's very easy to make strategy factory and also um, other things like portfolio relaxation and uh, selection of strategy. And then uh, of course, ultimately build your own bot. Because once we have backtesting engine then build your own bot is just a very small thing. I mean, like it's, it's not a difficult uh, thing at all. But backtesting engine is the main thing because we have to build a backtesting engine, which has to be very robust. Uh, what we have uh, searched and uh, found is like we can code something in Python, like the backtesting engine, but it will have the same uh, speed and the pace like C or C++. Because C and C++ are the best ones to build uh, quant frameworks, especially for equities. Um, because I have seen like in uh, equities, especially in hedge funds, uh, even at Morgan Stanley, most of the trading systems that was built was in C++. Because C++ is like blazing fast and there cannot be anything uh, which can be more faster than C or C++. But the only uh, problem with C++ C++ is um, you don't have so many people uh, who are the experts in this domain. It's not like you can, you can find a Python developer very easily who is an experienced person and like who knows a lot about Python. But to find a person like who knows about a C++ in and out, it's quite difficult. And if something, you know, uh, error or uh, bug is coming like to sort it out also, it's very difficult. So we need to have that kind of tech stack, which uh, helps us to like get, you know, people very easily. And also if uh, one of the employees leaves the company tomorrow, then there will be somebody else to take over this work. And Python is good. I mean, like it's, it's a really good language. It's a very easy language. It's a very nice language. So we are going ahead with uh, Python with uh, libraries, which gives same speed like C. So that's why we are uh, developing this quant developer. We will have them very soon. And all other works like architecture work or something, what we have to do for all these things like backtesting engine strategy factory, we are already doing it. And um, many, of thing, many of the things are already like 75% complete. So once uh, we finish this, we'll start to build this one. And when uh, then then we can have all uh, this kind of um, products. And uh, finally, like um, institutional side of the business, like uh, we are getting a lot of um, you know inquiries that uh, they want us to manage their portfolio among different bots, and we we will work on a different basis with them. Like they will not be going on the platform to you know stake and get the bots for free or. They will not be paying subscription or something. It's totally a different business model, like where uh, we will be taking, we will be charging them higher money. Um, it's it's nowhere close to what what we speak about the B two C side of the business, and we'll also be building some other kind of like custom made bots for them, 
like based on their risk appetite and what they want to achieve with this fund, whether they want to, you know, uh, be more with the leverage or how it's going to work. Like we will have a discussion, but we are getting a lot of institutional interest as of now. That's why I'm, I'm really feeling like this adoption from the institution is really true. I mean, it's not just in the media. Because I'm telling from our experience, what we are hearing from them every day and, and what kind of questions they're asking during, um, you know, these kind of meetings. So there is clearly a lot of interest from institutional side. I'll not be surprised like if we'll be onboarding some institutional clients very soon. And for even, you know, sentiment analysis data also, we're getting a lot of interest. Uh, probably we might start to sell it to some of the institutions or uh, corporates or something. Because these kind of raw data are extremely important to them, as I said before, because they, they will be able to fine tune it for whatever reasons that they want. Because these, these data are not just for building your own trading models or something. Absolutely not. They can do so many other things in that one. For example, fear and uh, greed index is there now. We, we all know it. So similar to that, they can make their own you know index. They can make some other kind of interactive dashboard. Many things they can make out of this data. How you use this data, it's, it's totally in million ways you can use it. But we are using it to build the models. They, they will be using it for some other reason. So we are really having like a lot of uh, institutional interest in our products and services. So that's it uh, from my side uh, for this month. And um, yeah, I will take some questions from you. If you have questions, like please write to me in the chat. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. I wish our Guru Baba bought. <laughs> if it is raw data, hi, it could be used for a nice tartar. <laughs> sure. When Lambo, when you can go to the um, showroom, then definitely there will be a Lambo. Yeah, we are considering freemium model. It's not that like we are not actually considering uh, something and uh, don't get me wrong because, you know, we, I, I, I have my diary always uh, next to me. Like here is my diary and I have, you know, like 1000 different ideas, which probably people might get it six months down the line or one year down the line. But uh, idea is very different from uh, the, the difficulties in execution. Because if you think about an idea, then we have to think about like, okay, what will be the cost of executing this idea? And if we execute this idea, like how much, you know, it's going to cost us uh, like in, in expenses. And if we say like, okay, it's going to cost like X, Y, Z euros uh, or X, Y, Z thousand euros, then, then it's always a trade-off between like whether this is really, uh, you know, good or like in the long term we can make it or not. There are like many freemium platforms, for example, you know, uh, Spotify and Netflix or these kind of companies, but you cannot compare a hundreds and billions of dollars company with a small company like BQ. It's not the right comparison because these people, even at their series A stage or something, they could raise like $50 million or $100 million. And today they are multi, almost like a, you know, like a half a trillion dollar companies or something quarter trillion dollars of something. So these kind of companies are extremely filthy rich. They're cash rich. They can do all these kind of adventures, but we can't do such things. So always we have to think about like how much we can do, when we can do and how we can do so that we don't stretch our balance sheet so much. Also at the same time, like we will try to do something which will require very less effort, but which will give us maximum impact. So we can do some kind of freemium models, of course. Uh, for example, the current execution engine will not be able to um, perform so much of trades like if uh, 
that those many thousands of people start to come. So we have to wait for this new execution engine, first of all. So once we have this new execution engine, then we have to make a cost estimation. And that's why we have hired the data engineer who will be helping us from moving uh, from our cloud infrastructure from um, Heraku to AWS, because Heraku is very, very, very expensive. It's very expensive. If we go to AWS, it's five times cheaper and it's five times much more reliable than Heraku because we had a lot of problems with Heraku. We had like a lot of, you know, fights with them because we are at the very, you know, premium plan where we can have access on, on the call and email, but they don't reply at all. Like when we have problems, when we call, they ask us to send a message. What can you do with such people? And this is not the reason why we are paying for the call service. Just for them to say that, like send an email on the call. This is why you are taking us, you know, uh, like these kind of products. So definitely there are like a lot of difficulties and uh, we have, you know, uh, hired this data engineer so that we can move all our cloud infrastructure to AWS. It will be more cheaper. Then we will have to see like uh, run the program for some time and see how it's working. Because once we have a new website, new marketing plan and freemium model, and then going for YouTube influencer makes absolutely wonderful sense. Because if they go there and say like, look, it's free, it's free for life. Just go there and use it. What time will come when we will say like, no, it will not be a freemium model anymore. It's a fixed time. And like now you have to pay it or you, you have to, you know, like discontinue using the service because it will not be free anymore. So definitely uh, it's there and uh, we will see like what is possible. Uh, Definitely, as I said, like marketing will come into effect only when we have the new website because current website is not good enough for the marketing because current website is not communicating anything to potential users about anything that we have on the platform. So the new website will have those elements, which is uh, perfect for making marketing. So we are waiting for a website which will have a state of the art UX UI and all other features which will make it, you know, like perfect for going to that platform where we can do uh, marketing with YouTube influencers or anything. And, uh, you know, like this, this kind of like UX, new website, new execution engine, and with freemium model, it's very important because if you have a freemium model, then there is something to say on, on the YouTube videos, like, look, this is free and free for life. Go. They can say that one. So people will come. So there, there is a, something to say. There is a story to say. And, and once pe so many people are coming on our platform, we will need a very highly scalable execution engine. So the current one is a bit slow, as we all know, but the new one will be fast. And also it can take any number of thousands of users. So that's why we need to make the infrastructure perfect first before going to marketing. Because if we go to marketing, we don't have a story. We will burn the money. It will be of no use. We don't get people. We will just lose money. But once we are in a position to do it, we will definitely do that. So for that, we are waiting for the website. Uh, will institutional investors benefit B-Cube holders through buyback and burn from profits, please? I don't think like uh, we will be using the profits completely for buyback and burn. But as we have mentioned, there will be some buyback and burn, but not exactly. Right now, this is not the focus. Right now, the focus is to build the business first, grow the business first, and make this business as a kind of like, um, you know, like a, be, being a market leader in this one. So once we are at this point, then we will think about other kind of things. Um, uh, will you share backtesting results and ratio for third party bots? Yes, 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 of course, of course, of course. We will we'll get the same kind of statistics like what you see on our bots from them. We, it's it's not just about the backtesting results, but we will get all those parameters like sharp ratio and everything, just like how uh, you will see it for our bots. We have already asked them and they will comply with that one. Uh, any documentation on how to provide a third party strategies from TradingView to BQ, is, there, is it through webhook? Um, yes, it's through the webhook. Yes, it's through the webhook. And uh, I think uh, from the webhook, people can sell, send signals on our platform. So once uh, the signals are received, like then it will be executing on the 
on the client's account, like just like how uh, it happens with our bots now. Only difference is like from the web hooks, the signals comes from the trading view itself. So you can design your strategy on uh, trading view. And then from there, like you can send us the signals. A question about our old favorite, alt bot. Is it still being updated, optimized from time to time, like the newer bots are, or is it considered more of a legacy product that just remains as is? Altcoin bot cannot be optimized because altcoin bot doesn't work that way. Because all uh, the, you know, like um, um, other bots, what you see on the platform, they're quant models. Quant models works extremely different from how altcoin bot works. Altcoin bot is working based on, you know, um, some price movements, volume observation. It works on a different level of AI. It's not working on the type of AI that other future bots work. And also they work on different type of sentiment analysis. But these sentiment data, we get it from the third party provider now because we don't um, um, have the smart indicators yet. Once we have smart indicators, then we can make this altcoin bot more smarter also. So the, uh, we can't really make much more optimization from them. And the last optimization, the very big one that we made was a sensitivity layer. So apart from that, like uh, we have not made anything and we cannot add much more things to altcoin. But, uh, but what we have done quite recently is to reduce the number of signals because once upon a time, as you know, it used to have like six to eight trades at the same time, which was not really good in my opinion. So that's why we have reduced it to very low um number of signals so whenever there is a good signal it's trading otherwise like it's not uh, really picking it up uh okay uh, what do you think about vr and uh, saidush tokens uh, are these tokens fundamentally strong enough to doing dca these tokens are very young and can't decide it uh, thanks a lot um I, vr yes like uh, victoria vr i think I, I have also bought it and uh, sold it several times. I still have few tokens, I think, of VR. And uh, Saidus, yes, it is, um, you know, um, it's a very good fundamental token. And also their team is very passionate about what they are building. And, and they have like very good partnerships everywhere. So definitely it's a very good thing. But uh, it's too much based on the games. That's my only concern because something should be very generic. And the, you know, like that's the reason like why we want to diversify BCube into so many other things. Because until people don't use your platform to build something and to use your platform for something, then the platform will have no value on that one. So that's why when uh, we are, you know, like selling the raw data, which means like you can do whatever you want with the data, but the origin of data will be from our platform. And when you can build your own bots by end of this year, you can build it using, you know, like we will have two different things, code-based and uh, rule-based. Code-based means you will be able to uh, design your strategy using Python language, rule-based, which is mean, uh, means like using technical indicators. So you can use your, you know, uh, any, any one and you can build your own strategies. So until people are able to use your, uh, you know, framework or your, your platform to build something, it will not have any value in that one. So that's why I, I, I don't know like how Saidus or VR will work in this way, but as far as, you know, their, their core values or their core business is concerned, like they are leaders and they're really doing good and there is no scam or something. You can do probably DCA, I mean, like on Saidus for sure. Uh, VR, I'm not sure like because it's a little bit out of flavor for now. Um, can you share uh, some info on trading computation on BitMEX? It's too early to share uh, these details because we are still under discussion with them. So uh, what we want to do is like uh, offer, you know, free bots to people uh, who want to trade on BitMEX. And I also encourage everybody to use BitMEX because, you know, downtime on BitMEX is not happening uh, these days. Like, I mean, like uh, uh, the pages or something, it's, it's really getting better exchange now and bitmax is also coming out with their own uh, spot exchange just like binance so they will not be just in uh, futures so this this exchange is like again you know coming up very nicely there was a time when it was not really uh, the best exchange but right now it's doing very good and especially when i am discussing with their team almost on weekly basis i'm getting more and more confident about uh, what they are doing and what they are trying to achieve 
So I think it's a it's a good exchange and um, people can always trade on BitMEX and you can even grow your Bitcoins by trading on uh, BitMEX. Because on uh, Binance and FTX, you can grow your stable coins, USD, USDT, whatever it is. But on BitMEX, you can grow your uh, Bitcoins. Definitely, it's a good exchange and um, something like we want to start a competition, like for example, you know, trade on BitMEX and um, you might get some tokens from BitMEX for, because they are launching their own token now, BMAX tokens. You can get their own tokens for integrating it to BitMEX. Plus, you will also be, you know, getting more bots for free if you are working on BitMEX, apart from that, what you are getting uh, for staking for only limited period of time, of course. So something like that we are planning and many more uh, trading competitions and other kind of um, uh, things we have in mind with BitMEX. Especially because they are coming out with a spot exchange. So we, we, we want to like move very close to them because many things can be possible when their spot exchange comes. That's all I would like to tell you for now. And um, uh, do you have uh, also have use on the next big cryptocurrency idea? Maybe IOT, M2M, like IOTA or Beyond Protocol. I don't know, like uh, uh, really uh, this, this whole segment is uh, heating up every day. So there, there are many things which is coming, but um, what I'm currently seeing and like troubled with uh, cryptocurrency innovation is that most of the innovations are not sustainable on the long run. So that is my only problem because people are thinking about, you know, gasless uh, transactions and everything. Okay, but like how long can you sustain these gasless transactions? You, you can't sustain it for a long time. You can get a lot of users for sure, but once you start to you know make it with uh, gas transactions, then people will tell like, oh, okay, I have like many other options, so why I should stay here? And I just stayed here as long as it was free to me. So sustainability is always a question. And for me, like to select the sectors, the sustainability is extremely important, extremely, extremely important. Because even on uh, Bcube, like we will be, we are planning to bring many of the DeFi protocols to offer their products directly on our platform. Like you don't have to, you know, log into Balancer protocol or uh, Uniswap or some other kind of protocols. Like if you want to earn money, so you can just do it on our own platform itself. Like you will have the, all the staking, lending, borrowing kind of thing on Bcube platform itself. You will be able to do that because it's a front end and the back end will be uh, Balancer or any of these kind of, uh, of platforms. So really, I, 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 don't, I don't see like um, this kind of blockchains coming. But I think next thing what can be very big for this industry would be, you know, um, uh, something like a quantum proof blockchains. Because we, we have not really seen a real quantum proof blockchain so far. Many people are claiming it, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't think like there, anything like that even exists as of now. And I'm also very positive on uh, another type of technology, which is like decentralized um, uh, exchanges for futures trading. Like we have DYDX. Something similar to DYDX should come more and more. If they start to come, then I think there will be a huge, uh, you know, uh, opportunity for many of the DEXs to become very big. So that's why I am expecting, uh, you know, like many other platforms like DYDX to come on uh, blockchain to be a decentralized derivative trading platform. So that can be something very big because until that comes, people will still be thinking like, okay, I cannot short in decentralized exchanges. I can go long, I can buy and I can huddle, but I can't really trade. I mean, like I cannot short, I have to just buy and sell. So something like an order book, uh, futures trading platform or derivative trading platform or options trading platform, but on decentralized exchange. That is something which I see as a very uh, big thing going forward because the market is expanding. The appetite is growing clearly as we are seeing it every day. Um, yeah, this ecosystem will blow up. And for that one, we don't have enough, um, you know, um, um, what can I say, like uh, enough foundations for these things to happen. The, the biggest blockchain that I am uh, very confident about going forward, which is going to become very big is Polygonmatic. 
I'm not sure about other blockchains because they are more of a hype to me than the reality. Whether it is, you know, um, uh, you know, like Solana or like whether any any other type of, you know, blockchains, it's it's all like more of a hype than um, the the real adoption or real quality like Luna or anything. But the real adoption and the real things that is uh, happening and and even fundamentally like being very strong and technically also they are very, very strong. That is Polygon Matic to me. So Matic is something that uh, can do much more greater things going forward. And they're really thinking of so many new things in the industry. And I really hope like um, they will start to research something on a quantum uh, proof blockchains, like which cannot be, you know, hacked even by a quantum computer because quantum computer might come in the future. Google is saying it is already having it. China is saying it is already having it. So if they really have, then all the blockchain, you know, like the wallets that we have is null and void because these computers are powerful enough to break into our wallets. So a quantum proof wallets or quantum proof blockchains is something that will be exciting going forward. So any more questions? True, David, um, that's exactly what we are working every single day. And um, when I wake up in the morning, there is only one thing in my mind, how to dominate this completely trading space, completely, absolute monopoly. And that's what in BQ we are aiming at, a complete dominance of this space. Because when we say like uh, all in one platform, which literally should mean all in one, I mean like, you know, uh, my vision is like once you go on the Binance app, I, I, I really, you know, adore and I'm inspired, I should say, by uh, the Binance. Because once you go on their app, they have literally everything. I mean, like they have staking, they have lending, they have borrowing, they have exchange, they have, you know, like uh, you can make your uh, DCA bots or you can do everything on the Binance app. Literally everything. You can participate on the launch pad. You have everything. And that is exactly what we want to build. Because one year from now, we will have all those things, what is there on Binance, except the exchange part. Because exchange part is a totally different thing, right? It's a, it's a totally uh, different type of uh, development things. It's a totally different business, which we don't want to get into at this point of time. But except that exchange part, whatsoever is there, we want to have everything on our platform. So it will be a truly all-in-one AI-driven platform, like no other platform going there. And we have like so many ideas that we want to execute like one by one, one by one. This year, we are uh, very sure about a few things, like for example, new website, completely with good UX, UI design, all the information there, making the smart indicators, start selling this to institutions, onboarding some institutional investors. Once we get DASP license, then we will go to, you know, like market making, custodian services, and uh, all, the, all these kind of um, services like B2B business. And then development of, um, you know, backtesting engine, strategy factory, selection of strategies, portfolio allocation, bundled bots, spot market bots, expanding the services to KuCoin, uh, Bybit, these kind of exchanges, and build your own bot. If you're a Python developer, build your own bot by writing programs. If you're not a Python developer, you can just build it using your technical indicators. So all these things is what like we are aiming for 2022. Within this 2022, all these things are going to happen. It's going to come true. And 2023, like Launchpad will be there. And we are coming out with a new, you know, protocol uh, where people will be making their own decentralized hedge funds. They will be building that one. So that will be a different project, but it will somehow be related to Bcube, like where Bcube tokens will also have a huge use case on this new platform. But for this new platform, we'll be launching a new token. And it's, it's a very big, you know, a project, but this will be connected to BQ. Like this project will need BQ for sure for its strategies and for other kind of technological things. So truly, 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 it will be a very big all-in-one AI-driven crypto trading platform, just the way how we call it. And also like once we have strategy factory and everything by the end of this year, 
I can promise everybody that um, this uh, selection of the bots will not be your problem anymore because we will be making it in such a way that even the tier one person will be able to, you know, like automatically select it. I mean, like AI will be selecting, you are not selecting. It will be selecting different things on the same day. But the maximum advantage will be given only for the tier five people because they are one uh, who, who are on the top or staking a lot of tokens and they will be having a maximum advantage of uh, strategy selection. But one thing is for sure that even for tier one people, you don't have to select your own bot. We will be making something in which like AI will be deciding which is the best strategy for the day. So this also is there and like completely we will make it hands-free over a period of time. Uh, if you ever come across quantum proofed blockchains, I hope you share. Definitely, I will uh, share it with you if I ever come across because even I am looking for it and I didn't find it so far. Um, looking forward to finally be able to buy my Wiki Woody. <laughs> you don't have to buy, like, we will, I, I will gift it to you next time. Uh, do you have an app uh, in the roadmap? It's it's there in the next year. Please, please, please go through the white paper. It's there in the next year's uh, roadmap to have iOS app and the Android app. Definitely we will have. They, these are not, you know, like a very um, um, big development for us because as a research and development company, we are thinking more about the products, more about other things. But these are simply IT developments, which we can make it very easily. Um, BQ already replaced a coin market cap for me. I am now just using the TS screener on uh, BQ website to check crypto prices. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's good thing, and we we want to bring bring many other things like which makes it possible for uh, people to stay on our platform itself to you know like look for all the details, and even we have been approached by into the blocks in the blocks or something. What is that in in the blocks? Right in the blocks. Yes. I know uh, before some people were using this uh, things uh, into the blocks or in the blocks, uh, which is blockchain analytics uh, things. And they want to provide free dashboard for all our customers for absolutely free of cost. And if they want more functions, it seems they have to buy the product. But um, if people like it for sure, like we can, we can provide it for free on our platform. Like definitely it's possible. People will be able to see more things for free of cost on our platform because for the same service, if you go on their platform, you will have to pay money for it. But on our platform, if we make this deal, then it's going to be free for everybody. So we are thinking about that also so that you are experience well now enhance on our platform. Um, thanks for your time, Guru, and all your work and passion for making BQ uh, great for all of us. Thanks, thanks, um, Hendrik. It's also uh, my greatest happiness. Uh, when is the B-Cube uh, boat party on your mega yacht? <laughs> I was thinking like the question would be more like when we will be making this on Mars. Maybe we should ask uh, Sir Richard Branson about it when he can carry us uh, on his Virgin Galactica. Very soon. All, the, all these things are going to happen because I don't dream things which is not going to happen, but rather I dream things like that. I'm going to make it happen. Roadmaps intend to change over time. Definitely, it can happen. Uh, it can always happen. Many things might get delayed or something for unknown reasons, but uh, uh, to answer your question very simply, next year, hook or crook, we will have Android app and iOS apps. That is for sure. So any other questions? Like we will have a few more minutes, two or three minutes. It's always a pleasure, my friend, Gabriel. If you are not on Twitter, like please join Twitter because almost, uh, you know, three or four times in a week, I'm making spaces, which is like a podcast, like where uh, we, we speak, we discuss, and it's, it's really fun to do it um, many times during the week. 
we always enjoy that. We always discuss many uh, things and all these updates, what you heard, uh, people who are on uh, Twitter, like they, they know it since a long time because every, every time, like when I go there, if there is something to share, definitely I'm sharing it with them. So it will be fun if you are on Twitter and uh, if you come there. <laughs> Zero, you are a hero. Don't worry, you, you will catch it up later on. Okay, guys, I think uh, you, you don't have uh, any more questions and um, we can end it here. And what I can say is like, um, we are doing very good. We are building many things and we are building much more faster than most of them in this sector. And uh, what we have in our roadmap is like a very big thing but we are able to manage it and we are able to finish it in time as much as possible. Sometimes we can get delayed here and there, but it's not uh, because of any other reason, but we have to hire people and we want to hire people like who are very smart. Sometimes there are very, very, very smart people who are, uh, you know, like very, really very genius people, but they don't want to join a small company like us at this point of time. But there are like so many people who are ready to work, but I don't want to hire them. So it's always a problem uh, when it comes to this. And so we have to, you know, conduct a lot of interview and get a lot of people on the, on the team. We will be expanding the team uh, from currently 12 people to 16 people very soon in another one or two months. So we are growing in team. We are already 16 just in one year, which, which shows like we are growing and like there is things to do. And we will keep growing very, very much. And what I learned uh, by seeing so many big projects and having a very honest talk with a lot of, um, you know, founders of big, big projects on coin market cap. Some of them are really very down to earth. Really, they're very down to earth and they're very approachable and they're giving a lot of, you know, advices and everything. So based on all these advices, what I, what I don't, you know, like uh, feel uh, necessity is to focus on the token itself. Rather, we have to focus on doing things like where people will be, you know, excited. People will be forced to buy the tokens. So we have to create that environment rather than thinking about the token itself. It's like if we are thinking about topping the university, then we will never top the university. But instead of that, if we try to, you know, educate ourselves very well, and if we are very well prepared for the examination, then we will be a topper for sure. So that's why I'm not really focusing only on like, you know, always like token, token, token. Definitely, I'm not doing that one. What I'm doing is like cementing our position in this business as a market leader. So once we become a market leader, everything else will, you know, happen automatically. Because I have identified three things currently in this line of business. What our competitors are doing, what they are not doing, and what they can never do. So these three things are extremely important when you are analyzing your competitors or in business. What they are doing that we are doing already. What they are not doing, also we are doing already. What we are doing that they can never do is also something what we are working on. Because there is no such platform in this entire crypto trading industry which comes with strategy factory or uh, selection of strategy factory or portfolio allocation or like randomly selecting, you know, trading for you on its own. So today, XRP is good. Okay, let's trade on XRP. Tomorrow, Cardano is good. Okay, let's trade on Cardano. You don't have to use the same thing again and again. So that's why we will be the most advanced one, which they will not be able to do it. Why they will not be able to do? Because we have advisors and we have partnered with a university, which cannot partner with a similar company like us, whether it's our scientific advisor or any of our ecosystem partner like, uh, you know, uh, Santral Chipelec, we have exclusivity agreement with them. So they, they will not be able to work with uh, other projects, which is similar to us. So in this way, like they will not get the same level of expertise. They will not get the same level of, you know, research and development and all this infrastructure, like how we have and how we enjoy currently. And we will keep doing that going forward. So that's why I have no doubts in being the market leader in this industry and BCube going to $100 one day. Because if everything falls perfectly, it is going to happen. And how? It's very simple. Almost 15 million tokens is uh, locked on the smart contract. 
on the mantra DAO or on our own platform or anywhere. So another 10 million is on the free flow. In that 10 million, actually one or two million, we have added liquidity on uh, Uniswap. So there is only few million tokens, which is on the free float. Imagine like tomorrow when we make freemium model, 10,000 new people will come. Or like, let's not say 10,000. Let me just tell you like 5,000 people will come. If 5,000 people are just buying like 10,000 BQ tokens each for staking, you do the math and we don't even have that much of token which means like it's an imminent pump in the token price. So these are very logical things that I am saying. And since our website is not having, you know, a very good value proposition, people don't know um, that there is staking. And when they come to know there is staking, then, then the incentive is like, okay, what we are going to get uh, with staking? They don't have answers for this question. But with the new website, we will tell them like, look, you will get these parts for free. You will get sentiment analysis for free. You will get like, you know, TS screener. You are going to get many other things for free just for staking. And you will also get allocations in the projects. And we are extremely conservative when it comes to investing in VC projects. You see, like we invested in Monstropoly, right? We invested in Monstropoly. Monstropoly has got selected for BNB's incubation program, which is Binance incubation program. So the investment that we made in the project got selected by Binance Investment Program or Incubation Program. And they have all the chances if they impress the Binance going forward to go on the Binance launch pad. So if they really pull it off, we are looking at something like 2000% returns on, 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 on the investment that we are making. That's why I'm saying like, it's not about like going quickly and looking some project, getting excited, putting all the money, losing everything there. It's not, it's not how it works. And that is why I'm so slow and like very calculated in selecting the project. Because when I make due diligence on a project, I'm 100% sure. And then I go for it. Otherwise I don't go for it at all. And if we are offering this type of, you know, very cautious, very quality, high level, products and services to our customers, everybody will be very loyal to us. Lots of new people will come. Lots of new users will come. There's so many platforms actually, which is, you know, claiming so-called profit sharing things and like uh, um, other kind of things, but nobody understands the catch there. They're charging you on the transactions that you make 0.01% of the total transaction that you make plus some profit sharing. So they are not sharing any of your losses. So you will feel bad. Like when you are making profit, you have to share it with them. But irrespective of whether you make profit or loss, you have to share the transaction volume for these platforms. So you don't have such kind of monkey business here. It's very simple. Buy tokens, stake it. Then you get everything. And since all the people, almost all the people have staked, now this new 10,000 people who will be coming, they will have to buy the tokens to use our platform. And they have so much of incentives that they are getting for staking BQ tokens. So why they will not stake? Imagine right now for uh, sentiment analysis, they are going to some other platform. For some other thing, they are going to some other platform. As David said right now, that um, he has replaced watching coin market cap for BQ because he can watch it here itself. And imagine like you start to get this kind of benefits, like where people start to feel like I don't have to go somewhere else, but I can stay on this platform itself. And that is something which is completely unlocking of the value. So when this happens, when people know it, when people hear it, and on YouTube videos, we are clearly saying there's a freemium model, lifelong it's free, but only maximum limit of $100 or $200. That's it. Otherwise, if you are happy with only this small money, you can keep using. Whether they buy product or not, we will be making money still because they are trading, right? Once they are trading, we have partnerships with the exchange. So they keep paying us some part of uh, the commission out of it. So in any way, BQ will win. So BQ as a company is doing extremely good. And even though like uh, markets are down now and many projects are already crying that markets are down. We don't know what we should do. We are losing interest here and there. We are not facing any kind of crunch because we make money. We make profits in the company. We are not worried about the market conditions at all. And uh, who else knows, uh, uh, apart from me, about the markets very well? Because I know market goes up, market comes down. These are all part and parcel of the game. 
But what we need to focus on is our core values and core product. We have it and it's going in the right direction. That's all I think and that's all I know. And that is enough to create the value for all the investors. How to create the value for the investors is not chilling about the token, you're doing some things and doing some you know, marketing without any kind of base. Create all the kind of environment for these things to evolve. Once you have an ecosystem for these things to evolve, then this will happen on its own. So that is why my focus is on the core fundamentals of the company. Now, right now, it's only about like getting new users, getting new clients, making connections with the institutions, bringing them on board, generating more cash, making the company more strong and making the company more known in this crypto field. Everybody should start to speak about our platform. That's how I see it. Once that comes, like everything else will follow after that. So this is how I see and this is what it's going to be going forward. And this is how we know uh, BQB is going to grow bigger, stronger, and massive going forward. That's it from me, uh, guys. And it was really very nice talking to you all on a Saturday evening and I Saturday afternoon. I, I really hope like you got all the information that you needed. And I'm very, I was very happy to answer all your questions. Thanks for the questions as well. If you join uh, Twitter, like sometimes when I make spaces, like you can speak to me there also. It will be a great pleasure for me to speak. Uh, any questions that you have or any kind of things or anything, you can just speak to me there. Absolutely. You can speak to me. You can ask me. Everything is fine. Uh, but uh, uh, Pete, there are people like who, who don't you know think or understand like what's going on, but still simply they, they FUD. They say something. And this is what I call as like boom, boom, babas. So boom, boom, babas are the problem. Otherwise, like normal BQBNs are not the problems, but we are not for boom, boom, babas. We are for BQBNs, right? So let's enjoy our journey. And I, I wish you a very nice evening. Have a nice day and have a nice weekend. We will meet again next month. Until then, we see you on Twitter or somewhere else. And if you're on Hungary or if you ever visit Hungary, just hit me up. We can meet here. Take care, guys. Take care. Amazing talking to you once again. Bye-bye.